Well, I remember my times with my mother being there when the cherry blossoms would be in bloom. Oh, gosh, it was great. Well, we're hoping we can get it to look something like that. I'm sure it'll never be as gosh, it was great. splendid as what she did. Yeah. And then the, the mountain that she created and the pathway we could mm -hmm. walk up, you know, we could walk up the little mountain, and there were water, and there was koi. Yeah. I mean, it was oh. And from the top of the mountain, you could see Mount Rainier from your back end. I guess, you know, I don't remember that part of it, yeah. but, oh, Had to be God. a clear day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. But that garden was uh, spectacular. Yeah. It was really something, yeah. And they, they grew strawberries back behind the house, or? Yeah, okay. huge, boy, they cleared that place. It was huge. So you could walk, could, you could walk near farm to their farm back to the- I guess, farm. yeah. Right. Went by Yoshimura's. Mm -hmm. You remember the Yoshimura's lived back there? Mm -hmm. And we walked, yeah. We, we walked everywhere because, well, you know, we didn't have a, <coughs> we didn't have a car, <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. So before the war, I know there were lots of activities that the Japanese community would right. get together. Right. After the war, was there anything like that? Um, events where the Japanese community could gather? Oh, gosh. After the war, you know, Yunichi had gone to Italy, and I had gone to Iowa and been I've gone to uh, nursing school. Uh, what was your question? If there were any events like oh. you used to have before the war, after the war for the community, you know. No, no I, think, I think the community that existed prior to the war was the creation of the Issei's, the first generation. And our generation went through the war, Yunichi and uh, Tok and these others. And I think the, um, those two experiences, the evacuation and the war, um, created such trauma that we did not ever recover as a community again because the war dispersed us, you know, all around so that, you know, people like uh, Yanichi and Tok, you know, they had gone to war and that had affected them. And I could see that in Yanichi, how that had affected him. For those of us, girls, uh, that had dispersed us, um, and we matured in independent communities. Um, like I remember Grace Matsumoto became a pharmacist. Um, and I don't remember how some of the others, but we were all affected by the war and the internment and the way in which we were dispersed around the country and the world. And uh, we could never really create that same kind of community again, so. Well, you know, though, that's sort of inevitable. When families grow up, the kids grow up, they each uh, create their own future. And <coughs> while the Issei's had this very um, comfortable cocoon in which we could grow, um, the war 
and the internment uh, destroyed whatever um, cohesion could have existed and uh, I think each family struggled to uh, create whatever they could of their family and in many cases uh, the second generation you know, we just dispersed because we were definitely uh, affected by the war like Tok and Yenichi and you know they're going off to war and for those of us girls we went our separate ways too so it could never be it could never come together as a community again we um we worked at different you know uh, military records and, and it seems and you know i'd like to say i hope i can say it doesn't look like any of the japanese um community who served in the war um didn't come back that they were Let's see, Don Matsumoto <coughs> was on a plane, I think on the way, oh, oh, <laughs> you don't want me to hide anything, huh? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, where was I? And it crashed, and he, uh, as I remember it, he, he crashed and, and died. Um, I think Tok and Augie and Yunichi uh, survived that period and came back to the island, amazingly enough. Um, So I think when it came, when we're talking about the girls, I think we did more um, dispersion. Um, married, 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 right? Yeah, careers. Yeah, yeah. Oh. On weekends and just just made you oh. part of the community. Well, let's see. <coughs> My dad was one of the ones who really wanted to have a Japanese language school for the Niseis. Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. second generation. And I think my brother and I were both really for that, for the retaining the culture. Um, we, um, my dad recruited pickers from the families of Japanese language teachers. And he kind of went around to see if there were any teenage boys who wanted to earn some uh, money working yeah. on a farm on Vashon. Well, I think the parents were very happy for them to get away from the theaters and the 6 cell station, s stadium, you know, where always the money was going out. <laughs> and so they were very happy to have their sons come to the farm and uh, I think I think they worked really hard. I think it was difficult for them. It's different to take off with a friend and go down to Six Seattle Stadium and go to the baseball games and buy popcorn and soda pop. But here we are on the farm. It's a whole mile from the farm to downtown to buy candy or ice cream. Oh no, you're just too tired to. <laughs> so the money accumulated much to the delight of the parents. 
<laughs> so every, <laughs> every Sunday, they would, one of the f well, mothers would come and they would bring cookies and candy and all this other stuff. So. So when you, when you went to Japanese school, did, did you speak Japanese with your parents at all during the, during the week or Sunday? It was a mixture, yeah. mixture. So we taught them English words and they taught us Jap oh, Japanese words. Sure. So we went to Japanese language school where we learned how to read and to write mm -hmm. and to speak it. So we had a good mixture. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had a mm -hmm. good orientation in mm -hmm. the language. And um, so then there were movies. Oh, you were Japanese. There were Japanese, Japanese movies. And many of these were old um, tear jerkers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And my mother <laughs> loved to go to the movies and cry because it was such a sad story. <laughs> so we didn't think much of it, but we could tell that the uh, parents enjoyed it. And where did where did they show the movies? It was in, there was a, um, uh, there was a hall, I think at Burn. Uh, was it Community Club? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Where Overpark is, the old Vashon School. Oh, okay. It used to be the school, but they turned it into the Community Center called the Island Club. Oh. And I think that's where a lot of things were. It was just a big, mm -hmm. hollow room. <laughs> And we used to, the, the older folks would have their meeting and we would, <laughs> we would play. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try another name on you, which I'm probably gonna mispronounce. Uh, Yoshimura? Yoshimura, yes. Yeah, Suma and Shiro Nika. Mm-hmm. Yoshimura's lived uh, northwest of our place, um, and they were just an older couple, childless, and um, my folks used to walk over there from time to time, and uh, I didn't see too much of them because I think my folks walked over there more than those older people could come to our place. So I, I didn't know them very well. And there were a number of um, single men who oh, were yes. Bashan and That's right. that came back right. as well. Yeah, they just sort of were out there. And whenever we would have a Japanese community meeting, you know, well, they would show up. Hmm. And then when they came back to Vashon after the tenth time, um, what did they do? Did Those they single men? Yeah. I don't think many of them came back, as I recall. But by then, I was so involved in my own career that I probably didn't pay much attention to, to them. That's right. They were old to begin with, and um, I had nothing much in common with them. <laughs> <laughs>